Coming up on Half Mile of Hell. It's gonna be a dog fight because there's lots of money up and that's when guys pull out all the stops. Most of the guys probably write me off in Edmonton. You guys, I told you what exactly to do and you don't do it. We're all out here to follow that gold buckle dream, but the risks that we're taking, I'm starting to question it. It's the West's original extreme sport. Four horses hitched to a wagon, racing hell-bent for leather around a half-mile track. The stakes are high, and disaster is only a heartbeat away. These are the Cowboys, and these are their stories. So hang on tight, because you're about to ride the Half Mile of Hell. Edmonton, home of the Capitol Exhibition and the second biggest show of the season. It's the city of champions, but the greatest champion of them all, Kelly Sutherland, just can't win here. I've never had a ton of luck here for some reason. I mean, I made the finals here once or twice in, in a dozen years, so most of the guys probably write me off in Edmonton. One man that nobody writes off is Rick Fraser. His Edmonton track record speaks for itself. Being a two-time defending champion doesn't really mean much. Uh, it, that was last year. This is this year. Edmonton is all about the prize money. There's five days of racing with a $50,000 dash for cash. It's a ton of day money and a $1,000 bonus to the winner of every heat. Edmonton is our best stop on the tour. Money-wise, it's just about double day money as anywhere else, so. It's gonna be a dog fight, because there's lots of money up, and when there's lots of money up, that's when guys pull out all the stops and run as hard as they can. Edmonton's Chuck Wagon Derby is unique. This racetrack slows down with each heat, so even the slowest drivers have a shot at the big money. More often than not, it speeds up for the last heats that these other venues we run at. But, you know, this is a chance for everybody to be kind of on an even playing field. And it's about time the guys in the earlier heats get a break. Rookies and veterans are all set for a clean start in Edmonton. Here, even the underdogs have a shot at the dash for cash. I think there'll be a couple of wild cards, like usual. Some of them guys in them first two or three heats, they start running three or four days in a row. Bang, they're in the finals. One of those wild cards is Brian Mayen. It's his second shot driving on this tour, and he's determined to make it count. It's not an easy thing to get into. I'm by myself, so all the work that needs to be done, I do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody goes through it at one point or another when they're starting out. And, and, you know, I hope I don't forget this one day when I'm successful and I've got three or four hired hands and can sit back and relax during the day and know that everything's getting done right and, you know, the way you want it. But I just look at it like you're going to do it, you're going to do it. And obligations or sacrifices or commitment is, you know, is just all part of that decision. Mayen wasn't born into the sport like many of the drivers. To pursue his dream, he's had to buy everything from scratch. And his resources are limited. I sleep in the sleeper of the truck. I'm a, I'm a one, one vehicle person and my, and my dog rides with me and it's, that's the work that, you know, from morning till night, the work gets done. And the number one thing is my horse's comfort. As long as they're fed and I can look after them and, and they're healthy, then whatever else has to sacrifice for that, I'll do it. And if that means I don't eat for a day or two, I, I don't have a problem with that, as long as they're fed and looked after. Edmonton comes hot on the heels of the Calgary Stampede, where only the top 22 drivers in the world standings are allowed to compete. Time is running out for drivers to move up in the standings and secure their place in Calgary for next year.
Shane Carter hasn't made it to Calgary in his three years on the circuit, but he has a real shot this season. Making Calgary is worth at least 50 grand, and that goes a long way toward buying better horses. I have to work with them, ones that aren't quite perfect, mentally or physically, and that's my best horses. Or most horses that I've got from other people that just didn't get along with them or they were kind of mentally disturbed and maybe that's why we get along so good. <laughs> Carter doesn't have a stable full of champions, but he comes from a long tradition of accomplished horse trainers, a skill that sets him apart from other drivers. There's tons of horses that get a chance with me and I got some really good examples of that on my good outfit. Horses that other guys just never would have ever given a chance. He's got a horse on his wagon team right now that's ran the last three weeks and steady. I used to own the horse. I sold the horse to Jimmy Nevada. Jimmy sold it to him. Shane drove the horse at the runoff for one year. I mean, but then Shane liked the horse, got the horse back. It's Shane's kingpin there. They may be Shane's kingpins, but they're other drivers' rejects. It's a daily struggle to challenge for a spot on the tour. A burden that weighs on his mind and on his wallet. Yeah, when you start thinking about, should I be in it? Is this a stupid choice I made? Is it really worth all the stress and, and the financial aspect that you go through every day? Uh, if you can make that Calgary trip, yeah, it's definitely worth it. Chad Harden is confident he'll be back in Calgary next year. It allows him to take on the unappreciated responsibility of show director. I took the job on just to help the association. Nobody really wants the job, and somebody's got to do it. So the biggest responsibility is you're supposed to represent 36 drivers at all the meetings and all the things you do. So no matter what, you can't do what's best for yourself. All you got to do what's best for the whole association. The show director is a volunteer position, shared here in Edmonton with Rick Fraser. It's a job filled with a lot of headaches and very little reward. Ah, oh, let's see. Can't think of any. Can't think of any pros to being a director at a show. No one enjoys being a show director. No benefits out of it, just a lot of shit and abuse. I mean, you never get a thank you or kiss my ass. It's basically, you're in shit 24 hours a day. It's like being a parking attendant and uh, in some cases a babysitter. You guys rode on the sheet, they need their flak jackets and need their helmet. Does that know what's on the side yeah, of the sheet? Yeah. So yeah. they know the rules. Chance, buddy, where's your helmet? Where's your vest, your jacket? They're phoning me, you gotta wear that stuff, guys. Okay, well then give him shit. Just can be uh, distracting, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Distractions can derail any driver, especially when there's so much at stake. Stay focused, stay sharp, and keep your eye on the prize. My objective is to win it. I mean, I'm gonna hook as tough as I can to win it. We're trying to gear up to make the top eight, so the pressure's on to do something on the racetrack here. I wanna win it, and if I can't win it, I wanna be second. If I can't be second, I wanna be third. I came here to win the show, just like a whole bunch of other guys did. It's day one of the Edmonton Chuck Wagon Derby. The temperatures are relentless, but the Harden family finds relief in a nearby pool. <laughs> it's not just the children who are hot. Thoroughbreds weigh 1,200 pounds, and it's a lot of work to cool that much horse. Probably go twice to three times to the wash racks today just to cool them down. I'll spray the inside of my barn roof. So we'll have two fans blowing through our barn to keep things cooled off. Does the heat bother them? I think it's just like anybody. I think some horses like it, some don't. So, I mean, how are you ever going to know? They don't really talk to us, just in case you don't know. Joking aside, overheating is a real threat. 
one the drivers take seriously. At the end of the day, it's just way too hot. That's when your horses can get sick. But, you know, these horses have been on a specialized diet, which includes uh, electrolytes, you know, which is basically your, your Gatorade for horses. So you really have to stay on top of that. Outrider Eddie Melville won't be part of today's events. He's on the mend after a bad fall in Calgary. When you go down going that fast, it's usually shoulder injuries, that kind of thing. I was lucky I didn't, my shoulders were okay. Uh, it knocked me out, so I guess I had a, a concussion and a, I bit my tongue really bad. <laughs> so I got about 10 stitches in it and, uh, and my right knee is pretty sore. It's all sprained and stuff, so I don't know. Well, the doctor, when we left there, he said there's no way you'll be, you can even think about Edmonton. So I haven't sat out in over 10 years. I've never missed a day in over 10 years. I imagine it's going to be pretty hard to sit there and watch. The Capital X Midway attractions might be in full swing, but the crowds are gathering for the real action. The wagons are ready to race. And another thing we should probably mention here, uh, the winner of every heat gets an extra thousand dollars. And that's what's really made this Edmonton show a, a big deal. Brian Mayhem is in the first heat. He has as good a chance to win here as any driver, but his feet are still firmly planted on the ground. I don't expect to go get a day money. I'd love it. But right now, I'm just, if I can be in the middle of the pack, like 18 to that 25 area every night without penalties, you know, and you just you stay clean, I, I don't have a problem with that. The first turn of the first heat is disaster as both barrels fly. Unfortunately, off of barrel number four, Brian knocked over both his barrels, Bill. Yeah, it looks like uh, he's going to be hammered. It uh, looked like a pretty slow heat, actually, uh, right off of the bat, but uh, no, it looks like Brian Mayne is going to be hit with the quick 10. That's unfortunate. Shane Carter needs to take advantage of every situation. In Edmonton, he has one. Most wagon teams are tired from 10 days of racing in the Calgary Stampede. Shane wasn't there. So his horses are fresh. Shane's had one real good team run in the last three weeks or so. And I told him to just keep running that team because you can get some valuable average points, give them two weeks off and come to Edmonton. That's a huge thing for me. I said, I use my good horses lots and I need every point I can get to try and make Calgary. My good ones go as many days as they can as long as they're healthy and feeling good, I'll use them. Thank you. Okay. By his own admission, Shane's horses are a little crazy. Today is no different. You guys haven't done nothing since no The best way I can do is get moving. Yeah. Okay. Heat number four may also be the best heat of the day, if history is any indication. Well, traditionally here at the uh, in Edmonton, uh, the finalists have come out of two heats in particular. Number four has produced more finalists than any other heats, followed by number seven. They're the two heats after the Harrow. Here's heat number four after the Harrows, fellas. Let's find out who's going to win. Orange sounds, Kurt Mensmiller and Shane Carter on the inside of him. Two wheels and onto the track. Hugh Sinclair grabs the rail, but can he hang on to it? Up at the front end, Kurt Mensmiller takes a run up the middle of the track. Hugh Sinclair will hang on by over. It's not a great start, but at least he's fast. It looks good for Carter until his outrider comes in late. Hang on, hang on to him, Eddie. Go silently. with Chad Harden is in a hurry. His show director duties have tied him up. Now it's a scramble to get hooked and get on the track. Rick Fraser is also late, and details have been missed. Every second spent attending to the show director duties is a second away from the wagon. Now it's Rick's turn to scramble. Under the hay. See the cross checks there? It doesn't matter. 
You know, and the worst part of all of this, I done them up. Chad Harden is on the track. Rick makes it just in time. He's on barrel four. Harden is on three, and Mark Sutherland is on barrel one. Starting on barrel four means your team is the first to set. Rick's horses refuse to hold, and he has to back them up. Horn sound, Mark Sutherland. The York really out in front as we go back to Wayne Dagg. Fabian Tech Industries right in behind him along the rail. Mark Sutherland has got it all happening on the front end. Wayne Dagg in hot pursuit. Has he got enough speed? Wayne Dagg turns him up another notch. He might get it done. Mark Sutherland and Wayne Dagg dueling it out to the wire. It will be Dagg by a nose. Mark Sutherland second. Spark control, Chad Hart third, and WestJet. Rick Fraser in fourth. It was a close loss for Mark, but close doesn't make him happy. I didn't win my heat, so I didn't win the thousand bucks, and I didn't win first, so I'm not ecstatic, but the horses really worked, and, and it was still a little bit slow. We were slow. We were so slow they could have timed us with a sundial. The track will be slowest for heat number nine, but that's not what bothers Kelly Sutherland. I know the one thing is I got out Drew here and I'm on the outside of Red's Johnstone for three nights and uh, that ain't going to be fun because he turns tough and he's going to be on the inside of me every trip. But uh, one thing about a draw I found out, when you get the draw, you better figure out how to win. A lot of guys, you know, they come up to the final, they draw three or four, they're defeated. They're defeated in their own mind before they even start. Well, that's no attitude. Take the draw you got and you turn it around to be the best draw. Horn sounds the charge is underway. Buddy Mims, Miller, Woody's RV World Quick on that three barrel. Here comes Kelly Sutherland and Ridge. John Stone, two wheels and out alongside. Ridge and Kelly in another matchup for the championship run here today. And Jerry Brevner from the outside could wind up second behind Rex Johnstone, who will take it by a horse like. Jerry will be second, Kelly third by a nose at Buddy Mansfield. Kelly's draw plays against him. It's not only a defeat, it's a slow time. With all the results in for day one, Mark is fourth. Chad Harden and Rick Fraser will need to focus if they're going to be better on day two. It's day two of the Edmonton Chuckwagon Derby. Man and beast alike can think of only one thing, staying cool. Mark Sutherland and his family have found the perfect way to beat the heat at the West Edmonton Mall. Yeah, West Ed's pretty cool. I've been there a few times growing up in Northern Alberta. It was always a nice trip to come down to Edmonton, so. Ripping down them, them slides and stuff, you know, if you don't get a good night's sleep, it's, it's physically demanding. <laughs> but uh, I'll go maybe tip over for a half hour and be rejuvenated, hopefully. Even though they're relaxing, for the Sutherlands, it's always about speed. Ready? Dad told us a trick to going really fast. You go on your heels and your shoulder blades. Well, that sent me zooming down there, and I got a bunch of water in the base. The red side was my favorite, because it was so steep, and it was about 100 feet high. Everyone got a wedgie, pretty much. Penis chicken, oh god damn <laughs> Mark's chuck wagon philosophy is about attention to detail. So it's unusual to see him away from his team on a race day. I, I like to focus on wagon racing during wagon racing time, and I like the holiday during holiday time. But uh, I don't think I'd like this sport that much if, if my family wasn't with me. So 
you know, I guess that's kind of what you have to do. A bit of a mental relief as well as a physical relief. It's only fair for the kids and wife. It's only fair. So if that's a sacrifice I make, then uh, it's a small one in my opinion. Race time comes all too soon, and for Brian Mayen, it brings little hope. Last night, his optimism was shattered when he took 10 seconds in penalties, plunging him to second last place on the day. Yeah, I wanted to make Calgary, and yeah, I want to get day money just like everybody else. But um, realistically, I don't want to go to the runoff. I don't want to have to rely on four days of good or bad luck to know whether I can go again next summer or not. The runoff is the qualifying meet at season's end. The bottom six drivers must re-qualify for next year's tour. A bad performance there means a driver can be off the tour. Brian Mayen can still avoid the runoff if he can just string together a few good days. There's a horn and they're off in a hurry. Herman Flad, Bardi Transportation that gets out there to take the early lead. He's got Brian Mayen, Hemser products on that rail position, making it move with all the speed you need to take the lead. He's only got the home stretch to get that done as Herman Flad leads the way. Brian Mayen up the inside. Look at this. Over him on a will. Rolls in to be second by a nose over Brian Mayen and Cam Even though he finished third and took a one-second penalty for a false start, Brian is in a great mood as he returns to the barns. I'm proud of it. I know I surprised Herman Flad when I turned beside him. I don't think he expected me to be there. I was proud that I had to make him run too wide all the way around the track. I, I, it felt good. Even if I, you know, had the second penalty and it felt good, I'm going, you know, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Yesterday, Shane Carter took a step backward from his goal of making Calgary, but he's not out of the game yet. We probably have to go up five holes to be comfortable. We just got to keep plugging along and hope that I can stay penalty free and my outriders can stay penalty free and all the horses stay sound. If we do that, we got a good shot at making it. There's the hole and they blast to the top barrel. Shane Carter and Hugh Sinclair. All stretch going to have two wagons at least coming to the inside of him. It's a fast, close heat. Carter finishes third, but he's penalty free with a good running time. Mark Sutherland watches from the laneway as heat number five tears up the track. Going into his heat, he's fourth overall. Chad Harden is 21st. And Rick Fraser is way down in 26th. Not very good for a defending champion, but there's still a lot of racing left. These guys run their guts out, and that kid run, but no, one more down. Outrider Ryan McElhaney missed a barrel. It cost Rick two seconds in penalties. Why didn't you jump? That's all I want to know. We could have got into the finals. We can't now. If you'd have been out riding for a long time, I'd have canned your ass for not getting on that horse. But get on the horse tomorrow night, okay? All right? Yes, I'm pissed. I am really pissed. But we'll get him tomorrow night. Okay? All right. Rick won't repeat his champion this year. At his barn, Chad Harden waits for the results. Thought we had a better time than that, but probably looking top 20. I don't know for sure, but hopefully crack another day money and get back in the top six or seven and have a chance to go for everything off night four for barrel two. and get back in the top four and run for the dash for the truck. Mark Sutherland won the heat. He's got the power and the confidence. You know, I come here to make that dash and, and I've got, obviously I've got the horsepower to do it. So uh, if I don't make any errors and my outriders stay clean, then uh, I should be pretty tough. 
I, I told him, I says, Mark, you have the best shot of any making it to the final four. You got two equal outfits that you know. That's really what it comes down to is as long as you got the horsepower, you got a shot at winning. But is horsepower all it takes? Mark has never won an event. Could Edmonton be his first? I think that he's certainly turned a corner and he's learned deep down inside, like deep down, I can do it, I can do it. That's what's important. It's just a matter of breaks now before you win something, win big show, eh? I don't know if that'll ever come or not, but uh, you know, I'm happy, I'm, I'm competitive, and you know, I just, obviously not competitive enough, I just haven't won. Eddie Melville has been forced to watch from the fence for two days. He's starting to question his doctor's advice. Kind of give me, a, you'll start to feel better here in two to three weeks. And of course, with in the chuck wagon circuit, we don't have that long. So you got to feel better a lot sooner than that. So yeah, I'm, I'm losing out on quite a bit of money here. But there's a lot easier ways in this world to make money than, than by outriding. So for me, it's always been about getting out there and competing. That's, that's what really drives me. Uh, you know, the day that I start riding just for the money is the day I quit. If Kelly Sutherland wants to take home any money, he needs to be faster than he was yesterday. There's a horn and the big four in the world standing charge around the top barrel. Kelly Sutherland and Rich Johnstone side by each again. Rich Johnstone clings to the rail and the lead, and here comes Kelly and Buddy on the outside. The big three in a hunt for the wire, but it'll be Rex Johnstone, Buddy Ben Miller, Kelly Sutherland, and Jerry Bremner, all within half a second at the wire. We run pretty tight all the way around, like Reg didn't beat me by much, so as long as they don't gap you by a bunch of points, the barrel draw turns around, you get the inside of them, they're on the outside of you, and uh, all three, all four of us were within a second, so uh, as long as you run competitive with the guys that you're hooked with, that's all that matters. The sun sets on day two after another successful, safe day of racing. Tomorrow will be quite different. It's day three in Edmonton. Thrill seekers get their kicks on the midway. And an injured outrider is back in action despite his doctor's advice. Outriding is everything to Eddie Melville and no limp is going to keep him away from the track. Melville is slow to get on, but he leaves the infield clean. Eddie's wagon crosses the finish line, and he's right there with it. Brian Mayen is also happy with the heat. He ran penalty free and is rising in the standings. Shane Carter is on track to qualify for next year's Calgary Stampede. The team is driving better than I've ever, any team I've ever drove. They're just in the mix. We don't even want to switch one horse off the outfit because they work so good together. They get stronger every day. They're young horses and they love to run. There's a it's a great start. Shane's team turns hard, but then something is wrong. Shane is forced to pull out. And just like that, his race is over. One of his horses is tangled in the harness. I knew that was the end. The race was real important to me, but not near as much as that horse was. The fact that he got a bit of a burn on his leg was bad enough, but if he ever would have broke it or something, that would have been probably the most devastating thing that ever happened to me since I started racing wagons. 
The horse is fine, but Carter receives a no time for the race. It knocks him to last place in the show and probably out of reach of his dream. If I can recover from this and uh, still qualify for Calgary, then it'll seem like it wasn't such a big deal. But if this is what costs me Calgary now, then it'll be a huge disappointment. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a three-wagon race. Started out as four, but Shane Carter, a horse, stepped over its tug, and uh, he had to pull up coming into the first turn. Let's go back and pick them up. For the news three. reaches Chad Harden at his barn. It's a tough blow, but Harden is optimistic. He's the type of guy who could rebound from it. I mean, we still got three shows left or four shows left, so, I mean, he's still, still got a realistic shot of making Calgary, but he just can't afford too many more of these little blunders, that's for sure. It's a harsh reminder that details make all the difference. Oh, we got a closed bridle in here? We need a closed bridle for Meaver. Attention to detail is the downfall of many chuck wagon dreams. A broken buckle, a missed strap, a moment of indecision can all have dire consequences. Add to this the occasional unpredictability of the horses, and it's easy to see why races can sometimes go wrong. In Heat 5, the chuck wagon community is reminded again of the danger that lurks every time a wagon rolls onto the track. Ford sounds, and they're off in a hurry. Howard's Transport Services and Mary Hudson is quick, but old Troy Flatt's got some problems. Leo Turkey's got some problems. They've got things tangled up down here in front. A wagon is over. Mary Hudson is down, but he looks like he might be in a bit of tough shape. Now we'll get everybody lined up and sorted out. Day three, heat five, an overturned wagon gouges the track. Two more have pulled over, and driver Barry Hodgson lies in the dirt. Just happened. Yeah. You couldn't see. Yeah, no, Troy's gone. Finish race. All right, sir. Barry is Rick's cousin. And if a wagon did hit him, then his life is in danger. Outrider Sean Caffrobe was right behind Hodgson's wagon. I was about to bury on three, and all I seen was the uh, chain reaction start on two, one and two barrel with Leo and Troy and come over to whack Barry. And all I seen was Barry coming out and hitting the ground. When he hit the ground, he was knocked out because he laid there in a crumpled heap. And Troy Dorchester did a job, hell of a driver from not running him over and that. I pulled as hard as I could and tried to move out as fast as I could. And I looked out like over the edge like this and I could see this part of the hub. Like you could see Barry's head was right in here. Luckily enough, I must have got enough out of the way and Barry didn't roll anymore. And uh, cause it would have been uh, probably the worst experience of my life. But uh, I was pretty happy to find out he only had a uh, dislocated shoulder and uh, some facial injuries. So uh, it turned out overall not not too bad for, but it, it was pretty wild. Barry is helped to his feet. The scrape he survived today was as close as they come, but it's not unusual. A man who chooses to drive a chuck wagon is a man who lives with risk. Shoulders. Yeah, but I mean, he's alive, he's not. No, no, he's talking and fighting and, of course, being stubborn. And he just popped his shoulder out, Mark. He knew where he was with everything. Nothing, no tingling. His lungs sounded good, she said. 
Normally, drivers push the danger from their minds. But at a time like this, it's hard not to weigh the risk against the reward. Driver Troy Flad's team started the chain reaction when his left leader refused to turn. It was just a day that he didn't want to go to the office, I guess. The air was putting the wrong horse in, making a wrong management decision. That's the worst thing that uh, a driver ever wants to put everybody through out there. I've seen it a lot, but never been the one right there to see the guy's head right close to your wheels. And uh, it, it's something the guy don't ever want to see again either, you know. And I mean, especially if it's a good friend, you know. I was just thanking God that it never got any worse than it did. It's, uh, you start to wonder the money that we're running for, is it worth it anymore? I'm not sure. We're all out here to follow that gold buckle dream, but the risks that we're taking, I'm starting to question it. Barry is off to the hospital. For the other drivers, the show must go on. Driver Barry Hodgson is taken to hospital after a disastrous wreck. His cousin, Rick Fraser, drives in the next heat. There's the whore again, a couple of unruly lead teams in the middle of the pack. A wall of wagons in behind Wayne Dagg, who is tucking him in, trying to get to the rail, but he won't be able to pull that one off. Up in front end now, it's Chad Hart. Spartan controls into that third turn. He stands up, looks for his white-shirted outriders. Rick Fraser, we have lift off, but he's got company in flight. Fraser opens up the afterburners. Chad Hart will beat him to the finish line by half a length. Rick Fraser will be second. Wayne Dagg is third, and Mark Sutherland had the seventh for fourth. Horn sounds, and they're off. The stoves go in. Outriders mount up, and Kelly Sutherland and Rich Johnstone in a vicious duel again to get out there to lead the pack around the track. Kelly Sutherland matches wheels with him right now as things get tight in the second turn. Kelly's ahead by a nose for second. Jerry Grebner now turning up the speed. French Johnstone on the inside. The bash off flash wins the ninth by one and a quarter. Buddy is second. Kelly is third. And Jerry Grebner has to settle for fourth in a well-driven heat number nine. When the dust clears, Kelly, Rick, and Mark are all out of contention. Only Chad Harden has a shot at making the dash. Day four in Edmonton. Everyone is relieved to see Barry Hodgson back on the grounds. His shoulder will need surgery, but at least he's alive. Well, I'm out for driving for the rest of the season, but there's so many people around here that are good people, that are, you know, friends. We'll be okay. Barry finds an eager substitute, one of the best. I was quite touched and pleased that he asked me to drive. I, I really, you know, when you're, you know, your, your own family comes and asks, that makes you feel good because there's a lot of good drivers. With his own wagon out of the running, Rick gladly takes on the extra workload for the duration of the event. But it's one more distraction. One more chance for something to go wrong. Day four begins with a crunch as Brian Mayen runs over another barrel. Ultimately, he'll return to the runoff at season's end to re-qualify for next year. My new horses, if they can compete and get me where I can rely on them, know I can trust them and they're gonna work hard and, and you know, as long as I can keep them healthy, then next year they'll be even better. In heat four, Shane Carter's top 10 run begins the long, hard climb back up the ladder. We don't try anything anymore, we just do it, because anytime you say you're gonna try, and that's left doubt in your mind that you might not be able to do it, we're not quitting, we're gonna keep going until we get as high as we can. In heat number five, Rick Fraser drives Barry Hodgson's wagon while Barry watches from the rail. 
Tonight, misfortune will once again disrupt the Hudson team. Here he comes. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's our horse, too. Barry's horse jumps up, but two outriders are down. Nobody wants to see anybody get hurt or hurt their career or any horses, you know, it's... But when we're in a sport like this, anything can happen. Things will happen. The outriders are shaken up, but otherwise unhurt. Meanwhile, Rick Fraser hurries to his own wagon only to find a problem. Guys, this is the left wheeler. This is the right wheeler. That horse has never in his entire life been there, ever. Now what the f am I gonna do when I get to the top barrel? He's gonna fall over the pole. Jesus Christ, you guys, I told you what exactly to do, and you don't do it. With time running out, the choice is made to switch the horses. Outriders and barn hands jump into action. With his attention spread too thin, Rick can only shoulder the blame himself. He may be quick to anger, but Rick is even quicker to apologize. Daily, don't worry about it. It's my fault. I should have wrote it down. My fault, not yours. I apologize to you, OK? It's just casual. We're all ready to go now. Get to the track and get him out of town in a hurry, Chad Hart. And Spartan controls emerges the early leader as he heads to the rail. Everybody else must trail. That's how they set up for the home stretch drive. Chad Hart takes him to the finish line. Wayne Dang will be second. Mark Settle the third, and Rick Fraser is on the runway. After the race, Ryan McElhaney is fearful of yet another penalty. One, two, zero, eight, five, and Rick Fraser, WestJet, flew in at 121, 19, 121, 19, a penalty for heat number six. It's his lucky day. There are no penalties. Horn sounds and the charge is underway. Kelly Sutherland tails his top barrel, and we've got us a wagon race on the front end with Rex Johnston with the overman route in the lead for a moment. These three guys are even in their careers and their speed and their talent. Twilight and Kelly Sutherland, he will get them one by one. Sometimes even the best can have a bad day. A knocked barrel and a slow heat spell doom for Kelly. Fate extends his Edmonton drought, and he'll have to wait yet another year for a chance to end it. Chad Harden had the fastest run of the entire derby, a surprising outcome that just might vault him into the final dash. Even more heartbreaking is the fact that he missed his shot at the 50,000 by only half a second. Chad Harden has missed the dash, but he has a new goal, a brand new Dodge truck two weeks from now. Oh, well, good thing is we've gained a lot of world points. And uh, still in the hunt for the tour truck, which was the, the key coming in here. Try for the 50, can't get that, at least gain points, stay clean, and keep gaining ground, hopefully get for the tour truck. For Rick Fraser, it's been a disappointing event in a season that he'd rather forget. Being the Good Samaritan this week caused a bit of grief in his own barn, but at least he's able to laugh about it. Puts nothing behind the eight ball. Everybody pulls in, cow pull horses. We got him out there, had the wheelers on the wrong side. <laughs> God, that was funny. But I hollered at the outriders and we unhooked him and switched him over in a hurry. <laughs> got out there. Today, everything's hooked right. A penalty against Mike Vegan gives the win to Barry Hodgson's wagon, and a cool thousand bucks will help ease the pain. 
Heat four has Kelly Sutherland hooked against his son, Mark. It's the matchup that everyone loves to see, especially the ultra competitive Sutherlands. Winning is in my instinct. The easiest guy to accept winning besides myself would be my son. That's uh, probably the easiest way. I mean, whether I'd try to outrun him, certainly. There's the horn and the charge is underway. Look at this, the kid, the pod, you look it out as Mark Sutherland takes the early lead. The Kelly second, and here comes Boyd Branch on a challenge around the outside. Come on, Mark, bear down. The old boy's in hot pursuit. Mark Sutherland is going to outrun Paul by a horse length. Kelly Sutherland will be second. Boyd Branch on the It's a feather in Mark's cap. Rick Fraser is back with his own wagon in Heat 6. Horn sounds and they're off in a hurry. Great start across the board. Grant Profit quick on that free barrel. He's got company coming from the inside. Lane McGillery two wheels it onto the track to get the rail. But Grant Profit, Jayco welding and consulting, increases that lead to two and a half wagon lengths as they fly into that fourth, third. West Jet stalking him all from behind, but Grant Profit could care less. Associates third, Rick Frazier has landed fourth in heat number five. Though Chad Harden is out of the dash, he's still running for world points, and he needs a bunch. There's the horn, they're off in a hurry. Great start right across the field. Chad Harden from the outside, Neil Wolzenbaum from the inside. And Wolzenbaum by Super 8 Hotel. He's running second, but he's captured that rail. Martin controls. Comeback, but he's going to run out of racetrack, I believe. Neil Wolchenbaum by a horse like Chad Harden, second impact with Darcy Plan, third and Lincoln. There's no 50 grand, but Chad now has a new goal going into the next event. For Mark, the goal hasn't changed. It's just a matter of how to get there. You know, as far as making it, I don't, I don't know what it takes. I've made it a couple, you know, I made one dash and, and, uh, so long ago, I don't remember. I just, the horses ran fast and they told me I was in. <laughs> I drew the wrong barrel. <laughs> Though Mark and Kelly didn't make this dash, it's still a family affair. Kelly's brother, Kirk, is in. And that's how they set up for the home stretch drive in the black gold dash. Kirk Sutherland now opens them up another notch. Here comes Doug Irvine with the late charge. Can he do it? He's going to run out of racetrack. Kirk Sutherland will get there by a neck. Kirk Sutherland, commercial solutions, is $15,000. This is, this is the scariest. I hit pretty hard, but I'm not scared. I love my horses. I love doing it. I want to do it. If I could do it, I'd do it tonight. And when you have good family and friends like I have, my family and friends are always beside me. They help you along and you never think of stuff like that. They're always so positive. 